welcome to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. Take two. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Jane, you need some vowels in your name. <laughs> How do you pronounce that? <laughs> it looks like Istwith. Gotta love whales. Such a cool language. I wonder if they have a uh, one of those uh, language programs for Welsh. <laughs> Always love take two. The second time is a charm. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Erst with. Now it's time to sit back. Okay, I don't know where the R came from. <laughs> I love foreign languages. <laughs> Erst with. Okay. Uh, all right. Everybody is. house it really really stinks and we bought the biggest best business package that we could get it stinks um at the at the new house we are going to have a totally different system and i am really phonetic yeah except where's the r <laughs> where's that come from um anyway uh, so yeah, Giardia, what a pain. I saw yet another post this morning, and I don't remember which group it was in, for someone who, uh, oh, don't tell me I'm frozen again. I'm going to keep going because it's not telling me that I have a problem. So we're going to see if it'll go. Um, so uh, yet another pet um, that is suffering with dysbiosis and screwed up guts, basically. Let's just call it screwed up guts, because that's really what that is. Um, uh, and it's back in. Thank you, Carol. Um, and I can tell you that we saw this in practice all the time. These, particularly puppies, more so than kittens, although we do see cats with Giardia, just not nearly as common. Um, we see these animals with Giardia, and the problem is they are overloaded with medications to treat it. So uh, the common treatment for Giardia could be just straight flagyl or metronidazole, which is an antibiotic, an anti-inflammatory, and anti-protozoal. So the Giardia is a protozoan, so it will kill that sort of most of the time, usually, but not always. Um, and very commonly, it's combined with fenbendazole or Panacure, one of those types of drugs. Um, and the treatment is anywhere from five to 10 days. So a lot of these animals end up, yeah, it's the fly causing the interruptions. <laughs> so a lot of these animals end up having multiple rounds of treatment because it doesn't disappear. So sometimes the veterinarian will try just metronidazole by itself to begin with. That doesn't clear it, so they do a repeat sample or the dog still has diarrhea or cat still has diarrhea, so then they run another sample and, oh, look, it's still there. Sometimes we would treat these animals and the, the first stool sample would come back as Giardia 1+, plus, and we'd treat them, and the next stool sample after treatment would come back as 4+. Plus. Well, that worked really well, didn't it? So, um, re can't wait for the farm move. Better tech, take three. Yeah, better tech for sure. So, um, you know, these guys, by the time they've gone through multiple treatments, we've killed off all the bacteria in their bowel. Anything good that was there is gone, kaput. Um, 
And interestingly, there are some studies that show, there went the fly. There are some studies that show that uh, if we put these guys on probiotics uh, right after wiping out their bowel, it can take them longer to actually come back to uh, a good gut microbiome. So that kind of leaves us in a crazy position. Do we do we give them good probiotics? Do we not give them good probiotics? Do we feed them fermented foods? How do we bring their gut back up to having a good population. It is very difficult. Now, a couple of problems that I have seen in practice in the past. You get a new pet, puppy, kitten, rescue, adult, whatever. It comes up positive for Giardia. So everybody goes crazy. You treat that animal and you don't remember that there's six other animals in the household sharing the same litter box, sharing the same backyard. And I remember we had one puppy in the practice that had been treated, I don't know, three or four times. And the, you know, saw multiple doctors in the practice, the chart came across my desk with a phone call from the owner going, how do we get rid of this? I'm really tired of treating the dog. It's getting expensive, running all the stool samples and getting all the medication. And I looked through her chart and there were like four dogs in the household. And I said, at any point, have we tested any of the other dogs? Have we treated any of the other dogs? I really feel like we're passing things back and forth. Lo and behold, we tested the other dogs. Guess what? Now we have a whole household full of animals with Giardia. And the problem is everyone was so focused on the one that they totally forgot that, oh, that one, by the time it had been in the household for a few weeks before getting a stool sample tested, had transmitted it to everyone else. So... Uh, very difficult to clear things out when they just keep sending things back and forth and back and forth. So we have to look at all the animals in the household. You have to be fastidious about cleanup. And the problem is usually these guys have an overwhelming diarrhea. So now you've got an animal going out in the yard with everybody else, squirting diarrhea. Even if you can find it, you can't get it cleaned up well. Um, Giardia love moist, humid, hot environments. So... Hello, welcome to the South. Uh, your pup had recurring Giardia for the first two years of his life. Yeah, it's really common. Now, my son had Giardia when he was two years old. He didn't get it from any of our animals, uh, which means he got it from a puddle outside in the yard where he loved to play. So, and at the time, we used furazolidone um, for treatment, which uh, in, in humans, uh, carcinogenic, by the way, we rarely even use that. We used to use it um, when we would do declaws on cats. That would be the uh, paste that we would put on their bandages. Um, <laughs> my advice saved you from dealing with the other three dogs contracting Giardia. Yeah, it's a huge problem. So because these guys, generally this is a young animal problem, and because we have screwed up their microbiome so horribly at a very young age, these animals take commonly take a long time to recover and come back to good gut health. We find that these dogs suffer a lot more from allergies, a lot more from food intolerances, and a lot more from sensitive stomach. Um, IBS, IBD, call it whatever you want, but it's a huge problem. You got it from drinking water where you live, sick for a year. Your bird died from a drop of it when washing his water bowl. See, really a big problem, really a big problem. Um, so one, uh, you know, treating it naturally, a little tricky. Uh, we can try things like diatomaceous earth, pumpkin seeds, something that would be abrasive uh, to try to kill off the organisms. Um, and a lot of people will do that. The problem, and there are herbal remedies and things. Um, the problem with a lot of the herbal remedies and uh, things like DE, that abrasive material that we're putting in the bowel to kill the bacteria or the protozoa or the worm, whatever, uh, can also be very abrasive on the gut lining. And interestingly, there was a case in my Veterinary Botanical Medical Association discussion group um, months ago, uh, but somebody reported that they had this uh, dog with all kinds of 
gut issues and just really out of balance in a lot of ways. And the owner had been feeding DE on a daily basis for a long period of time. And I can tell you that the veterinarians in that group, they are all holistic veterinarians. They sort of flipped a cork over DE being given to dogs in general, but particularly to dogs for long periods of time and uh, talking about how hard that is on the gut. So, um, uh, pretty interesting. Um, there, you know, there's two sides to every conversation. So, um, and I have resorted to it. So for instance, in these families where we just keep coming up positive, coming up positive, coming up positive, it's like, okay, well, we've already gone through all the drugs. It's not working. Let's throw some DE in there for 30 days and see what happens. And sometimes that will work. It will solve the problem. So I don't count out anything for these treatments. But the problem is once we maybe have the Giardia gone, because there is one school of thought that says once you have Giardia, you will always have Giardia. It's just sort of lying in wait in low numbers. And when your immune system is stressed, boom, it pops up. By the way, my son who had Giardia when he was two, that kid's 32 this year and still has a lot of GI issues. Um, so he's sort of living proof that once it's screwed up with Giardia, you're kind of screwed up for a while. Uh, he's been working with uh, a couple of different doctors to try to get that under control. Um, so it is a problem and it's a problem for our pets. I do find that these dogs tend to, and I'm saying dogs because we see this so much more commonly in dogs. Uh, dogs tend to be very sensitive to chicken. They tend to be chicken intolerant. I think a lot of times they've also been over vaccinated. Um, a lot of times these pets coming with Giardia are coming from either puppy mills, pet stores, um, high intensity breeding situations where there's too many dogs and not a clean environment, but that's not always the case. I mean, we get good breeders with good environments that still will get some Giardia. Um, how about fecal capsules? Yes, you could try doing a fecal transplant. You could try, um, you know, really upping your game with soil-based probiotics. And uh, I think that vitamin B12, folate, a lot of the, and checking vitamin D levels, because we now know that animals with chronic gut problems are very commonly low in vitamin D, which is so important for good gut health. So I think that, yes, this is recorded. Um, so I think there are a lot of things that go together to, to make up the problem. But the underlying Giardia, which is an immune system problem because the immune system was not able to fight it off and it became overwhelming. Um, it, it is a chronic problem for a lot of these pets and you're going to have to work really hard at having a very clean diet with something that is non-reactive for them. And that does not mean hydrolyzed protein prescription diets. That's the bad way to go. Um, I, I'm not familiar with that, Lorraine. Um, so, uh, you know, you're going to have to work hard if you get an animal with this. But the biggest thing I can say is if you, if you bring in a new animal to your household on day one, get a stool sample checked day one keep them isolated take them to one area in the yard to potty give them a separate litter box if it's a cat get that first stool sample into your veterinarian as quickly as possible um, and find out if you have anything and then if you have something you want to jump on it immediately and keep them separated until you you know that they are clear. So after treatment, you have to recheck a stool sample. I'd probably check a couple um, to make sure they're okay. Uh, great, um, I hope I have the, for DE information, I really like this website, Wolf Creek Ranch. I think it's a .net. I'm hoping it's a .net. Uh, they have a lot of information on, yeah, there you go. They have a lot of information on DE dosing. They sell DE, we do not. Uh, it has to be food grade. Don't use your pool filter stuff. Um, your boy system has at last settled down. Hopefully it stays that way exactly. Uh, oh, really, your rescue came with Giardia. The pet company, insurance company says they won't cover any future issues that could have to do with it. So great, any kind of GI problem your dog ever has, good luck. Uh, took you over a year to get a negative test. Gut microbiome totally destroyed. Yeah, 
They will be, absolutely. Uh, oil of oregano the other day for Giardia, I don't have any thoughts on that. I haven't used it, so I can't comment on it. I had one client who used it for ear infections in his Newfoundland, and the dog always smelled like a pizza. That's about all I know about it. <laughs> so I would uh, talk to Melissa Shelton about using um, oils. Um, okay, so uh, that's my thoughts on uh, Giardia. It's it's problematic. You have to work really hard. Uh, so me personally, I would have these animals on some really good probiotics, and I'm really liking the soil-based probiotics for this uh, because so many of them are low in iron. Uh, they're, they become mineral deficient. They're folate, B12, vitamin D. So many things uh, get screwed up. Um, so, okay, everybody have a wonderful day. The donkey vet is coming this morning. We're going to see how that goes. Um, we've got to give more antibiotic injections. Welcome. I know we shouldn't be using antibiotics, but we had incredible snot from these guys and coughing. So, got to go out for that. And uh, can overuse of steroids cause an adrenal tumor? Well, it can cause um, Cushing's. Uh, a tumor? Good question. Don't know. Yeah, the probiotic that I'm really liking, we've got a soil-based one from Adored Beast, and the other one is Symbiota, which I'm using for my guys right now, and I really like it. I don't know if I can find that real quick. My music is going to do weird things while I... Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products yeah. on the website. I can't type. www.drjudymorgan.com Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Okay. Sorry, I can't find it right now. Sweater will post it Dr. at some point. <laughs> My music is just going to keep repeating. Okay. See you guys.